What I would like to do is for you to put your hands out, your left hand and your right hand, just in front of you with the palms up. Your left hand, put your left hand up. Okay, that's good. Now, in the palm of that hand, I want you to focus all of your attention on that hand. Attention goes where your eyes go. So look in your hand as if people say your future is in your hand. So in that left hand, I want you to imagine everything that's ever happened to you. Everything that's ever happened to you is in that hand. And we're also thinking about times even now when you're scared, where you're giving a presentation and you know exactly what you're talking about and you're worried that somebody might be mean to you or might even laugh at you. Everything about you and your behaviour is in that hand. Now put out your right hand. In that hand is the way that you would like to be. An interesting thing happens. When we know how we don't want life to be, we know how we do want it to be. So there's a part of you that knows, wouldn't it be nice if I could stand up in front of 200 people and if one of them laughs, then I know there's something going on with them. It's nothing about me. I'm just going to carry on and give my information. Wouldn't it be nice if life could be this way? Now, continuing to look at your right hand, you tell me and tell yourself how you want life to be, how you want you to be in relation to life. Okay, so keep looking at the hand, right? Now I know that you made a picture in your head then about you being confident. So as you keep looking at your hand, put a picture of yourself being confident. What do you look like? What are you wearing? How do other people know that you're confident? Tell me about your confident future self. So when you say you're not worried, okay, so what's a positive way of saying, I am not worried about what other people think of me? What are those strong points? Keep looking at your right hand. Tell me about those strong points. What makes you look strong? What makes other people know that you're strong? So I know in order for you to say these things, and I'm sorry that I'm talking at the same time, but I'm getting you focused. As you're looking at your right hand, the reason why you're saying these things is because you've had experience either of yourself being confident or other people being confident. You know what it feels like, don't you, to be confident, sure of what you're saying, knowing that you are saying the right thing, looking the right way. What else? I know that's the main thing and so I want to deal with that as you're looking at your right hand. Another way of saying not being worried about what other people think is knowing that they might think something not good about you, though you're not overly concerned about that. Knowing that People don't say what they think and they don't think about what they say, generally speaking. Then, So you can't even trust if somebody says they like you, can you? Because the only person you can trust is you. Now, as you get to know somebody like the person that you live with, you get to know that person and trust grows because trust needs to be earned, right? They need to earn the right to have your trust. And at the moment, I'm not telling you that you've got to start to trust everybody and like them and engage with them. No, 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 no. I'm giving you ideas for you to weigh up with your right hand and your left hand. In the right hand, 
is you being confident. In the right hand is knowing that there are people that are going to be mean to you and that's because of what's going on in their life. Not everybody is going to be nice and some people that are nice they might not be thinking good things anyway. Now what you can rely on and what you can trust is your own sense of self. Knowing that if somebody is laughing, even smiling in a group presentation, or even being mean, even about to say what you're saying is wrong, you can be so sure of what you're saying that you don't need to defend it. You just need to know there's something going on with them at the moment that makes them angry. Maybe they're just in a bad mood. Maybe they've got lots of bills to pay. Maybe they're not having a good love life and for some reason it's safe to be mean to you. It's got to come out somewhere. Everything is energy. So as you keep looking at your right hand now, whether it's resting on your lap or whatever, I want you to really understand what you want in your right hand, how you want to be. Knowing that it's not that way at the moment, use the thoughts and ideas and everything from the past, everything that's in your left hand, and it's usually, usually helpful to close your eyes, just allow your eyes to close. You can process much more deeply when your eyes are closed in the privacy of your own mind. In your left hand is everything that is left. Everything that has gone before. The age you are at the moment, knowing what you know, you know more about life, other people, your own past, the world, than you've ever known before. Think about that for a moment. In your left hand, you have all the experience, all the hurt, all the happiness, all the experience of life that you've ever had. You know more about life now than you've ever known before. And you know that there are things that you want to stay away from. And you do a very good job of keeping away from scary things. So in your right hand right now, you're recognising that although the world is full of other things that you may not like, sometimes you're going to be exposed to them. Sometimes there's going to be a person in the audience that might smile or laugh and you know that you with your sensitivity might think that they're laughing at you and yet you know what you need from all the experience you've ever had, you know what you need in that moment, what resources you need, what talents and abilities you have earned the right to have that will protect you in that moment. I would like you to be in front of an audience so confident, so self-assured so clear thinking, so, so confident and happy in yourself that if somebody laughs, you might even laugh back, knowing that it's not about you anyway. You'll find a way of maybe engaging with that person in your talk or ignoring them completely. Some good presenters say to that person, I wonder if you'd like to tell everybody else what that joke is because we could all do with a good laugh, couldn't we? And they'll probably say, oh no, it's nothing. <laughs> and they're the ones that feel bad. You'll find a way through your creativity. And you see, you access your creativity through being calm. So the more you can relax now, the more you can reflect upon everything that's ever happened to you and very strangely it's your very fears that teach you something oh if they say this what if they say that how about if they're mean because you know in your imaginings how people could be in your right hand your calm confident creative self 
knows exactly what to do or say to handle that. And that's what happens in your dreams. Sometimes we attract our worst fears towards ourselves so we can be the best we can be in real life when we wake up. Now, with honest unconscious movement, I want you to allow and hear the word. I want you to allow those hands to come together slowly now because some things take time in your mind now you know your left hand is everything that you've ever experienced all your thoughts and feelings and fears all the horrible things that have happened to you and all the wonderful things that have happened to you the fact that you have learned how to trust, how to love, to sift and sort through all the people and all the personalities and all the things people say and do and all the things they could say and do. And in your right hand, there is you with all the resources of the whole of your mind, everything that you have earned the right to have through your experience, knowing that you are sensitive, rejoicing in the fact that you are sensitive, knowing how to keep yourself safe. Allow the hands to slowly come together. Allow the hands to come together so that you get to a point where you are holding your own hand. When you know that the left hand and the right hand are together, where you can utilize all the aspects of you, yes, even your angry self, we're going to bring some balance to that. You see, some might call it anger and some might call it strength, that when somebody is mean to you, sometimes you know just a look, just a word, just an acknowledgement. A good presenter might just look in the direction of the person who is smiling and maybe looking at the phone, maybe has whispered to a friend, just like a very good school teacher looks at a child and the child then realizes they've done something wrong, that they weren't paying attention that they weren't engaged. You are in the position of authority. It is your talk. You have earned the right to deliver this information. And you might use a joke. You might ignore them. You might just look at them, but you'll find a way. You see, your confident, calm, creative self will find a way to keep you safe. And as you are holding your own hand, you realize you are always there for you. You see, in the past, others weren't there for you when you needed them. And you learned a particular way of surviving, of protecting yourself. Now, when you think about that child that you were, how you suffered, all the feelings that you had. You remember being a small child, just wanting and waiting to grow up and be strong. Oh, you made promises to yourself when you were that young. When I'm grown up, when I have my own money, when I have my job, when I can look after myself, boy, that will be a good time. I can't wait to grow up, to be free. Remember now, being a little girl, not in charge of your reality. A little girl vulnerable and true. A little girl who so much now needs your help. She looks at you all grown up. Wow, look at you. I couldn't wait to be you. I couldn't wait to be confident. You know all that stuff. That's really complicated. She looks at you for strength, for help, to be confident. 
and now you have earned the right through all your suffering, through all your pain, through all your dealing with others, through all your imaginings, knowing how people can be, hoping that they won't be mean. Now you know they can be mean and you know exactly what to do about it. You know how to keep yourself safe. And now when you imagine that small child in front of you, I want you to bend down and put your arms around. Just put your arms around her. Acknowledge that she's there, that she's always been part of you. And that sometimes you've been very angry trying to keep her safe. And sometimes you've been very detached, almost ignoring other people and life itself to try and keep her safe. Now you can come somewhere in the middle. Now you hold her. She's the playful part of you, the frightened part of you, the small part of you that needs your help. And everything that you've ever experienced now, all of the wisdom, all of the experience, all of the confidence, because yes, you are confident. You are confident and you are competent in the way you live your life. And you are very creative. You hold her with your arms around her and everything that you are, all the information just blends into her. It almost comes through your hands into her little body and she understands. You're all grown up now. You're all grown up. What a powerful person you are. You talk to people, sometimes hundreds of people, sometimes one or two people. And sometimes they say things they don't mean. And sometimes they are mean in what they say. And sometimes other people might say, well, you're being bullied. So you know exactly what to do because you're the grown up. You tell her right now in your way, in your mind, you give her the assurance that you are her protector. You'll make sure that she is safe. And she now gives you something very special. All the creativity, all of her imaginings, all of her hope for the way she wants to be when she's grown up strong, confident, compassionate, sensitive, loving, knowing who to let in, who to be good towards and who to keep at a distance, though not to keep all of life at a distance, knowing the balance, knowing the harmony of that left and right hand of the left and right path. You see, here you are with me at this moment in time, now complete past and present, in this moment looking forward to the future. Here you are, your younger self, your present self, looking forward to your future, the best possible future. And as you think about it now, all the parts of the mind are coming together to experiment, hear the word, to experiment with your best possible future. I want you to imagine now you are at a fork in the road. There is a left path and a right path. The left path is well worn. You've been down there a million times. The times have been scared of other people. The times have been angry with other people, knowing that it's all about yourself, your past, how people have treated you, how you want to be treated, how you are scared of being treated. That left-hand path, go down that path now, where things remain the same as they've always been. You're trying to hide from people. You're doing the minimum amount. You don't really want to do what you're doing, but you have to do it because it's your job. You're scared. You, you try to do things and then come up with a million reasons for not doing them. You know that path very well. Go down that path for the next seven days. 
where things are just the same as they've always been. That there's no reason to change. There's no reason because you want to keep yourself safe. You don't want to engage with people because they might just be mean. Even walking down the street, you don't feel safe. Down that left-hand path, everything that you have told me about yourself and your life at this moment, everything, go through the next seven days as that person, scared, small. And now, come back to the fork in the road and now you're going to go down the right path. You're going to utilize everything from the left path to make life better. Knowing that sometimes people can be mean, yes, but you can be meaner if you really wanted to. You choose not to be. You choose to use your strength in a different way because you are now creative. You walk down the street in a different way, in a confident way, head held high, knowing where you're going. You present to people because you really know they need the information you're presenting. It's your job and if some people laugh or giggle, it's their problem, not yours. You find a creative way of enjoying, goodness me, enjoying relating to other people, almost looking for their reaction, knowing that you can handle it. You go down the right-hand path, more fully engaged with people because you are protected. You are protecting that little girl. You are all grown up now. You have earned the right to walk this earth. You have earned the right to look people in the eye. You have earned the right to talk to people because the reason why you're talking to them is because you know more than they do and they need your information. They're just embarrassed that they don't know it already. Or maybe they're trying to show you what they already know. Thank you very much. You know how people are and you know how to handle them going down that right hand path. Everything is better than before. You even feel the weather on your face, the moisture in the air, the breeze that fluffs up your hair, the rain, the moisture on your body. You have spent a lifetime getting to this point. You have spent a lifetime knowing how people work, knowing what to do with your body, how to do your hair, how to do your makeup, clothes to wear, to be the best you can be. You have spent a lifetime knowing how to handle people, experimenting with what to say, how to be, how to take on board what they say, how to ignore things that are none of your business anyway. You know exactly what to do. Now, come back to the fork in the road. It's a clear choice. You know exactly how to experiment, hear the word, to experiment with all the resources of the whole of the mind. You know how to experiment and it brings you joy, anticipation, looking forward to the future to put your creative self to work, to look forward to what life has to offer, to engage more. Things even taste better smell better, you feel all your feelings and you are happy to be alive. The energy of life flows through you because heaven and earth meet within you. You are reconnected to all the good, all the positive that life has to offer. Feeling so positive, so engaged, so very full of energy, life and vitality that if somebody just isn't feeling it and that they're just being awkward, you can just smile it away knowing that you have earned the right to walk this earth, to contribute, to play, to play, knowing that you are all grown up now with all the resources of the whole of the mind, not knowing how you're going to be until the situation occurs, though knowing 
that you are now connected to all the resources, all the talents and abilities. As you said yourself, you know what you're talking about. You know the way you are thinking. And now everything is easier than before. Everything is right. Even those things that aren't quite everything is right. You take some deeper breaths now, relaxing in your own creativity. You see, if you knew what the future would bring, there's no need for confidence. Confidence is something we utilize in the face of risk. When we don't really know how things are going to turn out, we can just be our best, most positive, most resourceful self and engage with life. If we knew what things were going to be like, then it would be very, very boring. There'd be no spark. We'd just go from day to day, knowing I'm going to say this, they're going to listen, and I'm just going to leave and go home. And everything is okay because nobody really says anything that they shouldn't, and I know what I'm going to say, I just didn't know or care what they were going to say. You know how boring life can be if you don't engage with others. Sometimes when you know what you're going to say and how you're going to present, it's great if somebody interrupts or if somebody asks a question. Even if it seems mean, you know how to handle it. This is the beginning of your re-engagement in life. Now, because things become easier than before, I want you to sense the ease and comfort in your own head. A balance, a harmony, as everything becomes easier, as you relax deeper and deeper, listening to the sound of my voice. All you need to do is take three deep, easy breaths. And when you breathe in, you take in from life everything that you want. And your very clever body, in the same instance, far quicker than I could ever say, releases that that is no longer useful. You let your own body, the rise and fall of your own body, the breathing in and out. You let your own body remind you, you take in from the world that which you want and you release that that is no longer useful. All the carbon dioxide, all the pollutants, all the blooming viruses that are about at the moment. You increase your immune system. You take in life-giving oxygen and you release that that is no longer useful. You take in all the positive, charming compliments, all the good energy from people, and you release that that is no longer useful. Places you wished you'd never been people you wished you'd never met, things that people have said in the past that hurt you, that made you miserable. You release that now with each easy breath in and every gentle breath out. It's just like going to a restaurant. When you look at the menu, there's things on there that you wouldn't even want to put in your mouth. You can't understand why people would like it. The world is full of stuff. You only choose that which is useful to you, that which nourishes you, that which you enjoy. Knowing that there is other stuff there is just okay because there's other stuff in life that other people enjoy and that's fine. It's just not for you. You take in from life that which you want, you release that that is no longer useful. You dismiss it, you smile at it, it doesn't matter. You are no longer overly concerned about what other people think because you really don't know what's going on with them anyway. And you've always thought of yourself as a bit of a mind reader 
standing in front of people, talking away, thinking that you knew what they were thinking about? That's preposterous. Of course you didn't know. You never knew what happened with them, what a bad morning they'd had, how they are not having a lover of their own, how they are so miserable or trying for a child and can't have one, or how their pension has just dissolved or they've got to move countries. You've got no idea what's going on with them and why they might come out as being mean to you. And so now you forgive them. They're just learning. And you forgive yourself. You're just learning. All you can do is be calm, be creative, and be confident. Confidence is a natural state of being. When you were born, when you were a little baby, something within you knew you were going to crawl and move about and then stand up just like everybody else. A natural state of being. No matter what was going on around you, you knew by your own internal programming that you are going to grow up, learn all these things, get yourself strong and confident and beautiful and buy clothes and grow your hair and do your makeup and wash yourself and feed yourself certain foods. You are looking forward to growing up to being effective in the world, to having a job, having your own money. Oh my goodness, how powerful you are. As you are holding your own hand, that's all you have to do from now on. Hold your own hand and all of this wisdom comes back to you. With love, with light, with laughter and with ease. Life is a gift. Yours is to learn to enjoy. Life is a gift. You are here. You are here. You are here to learn to enjoy. With love, with light, with laughter and with ease. As you sleep tonight, you will sleep better than you've ever slept before. Snuggling down into that lovely, comfortable warmth. In the privacy, in the security, in the safety of your own bed. In the space you have created for yourself. Here in your bed and here in the world, you've created a space a place for yourself and there is always room for you. There is always a place for you. There is always space for you. You create your own space. You take it with you wherever you go. You are protected. You are strong. You are confident and you are happier than you've ever been before. In a moment, you will open your eyes. Your eyes will open as if you've had a long and peaceful sleep. You may remember everything I said. You may forget something I've said. Forget to remember the bit you forgot to remember when you remember to forget them. It just makes you smile that all that stuff's going on in your head and that you can begin to learn to enjoy just being yourself here at this moment in time, looking forward to the future, reconnected with all that is good in the world and good within you, looking forward now as you open your eyes with one, two, three, four and five.